bonjour, comment ça va? Allez-vous français, oui? Non? Et français. Here I am, uh, Mr. Cavanaugh, driving through the uh, bayous of Louisiana, named after King Louis XIV by the French explorer La Salle. So how do we get such a French presence down here? I'm listening to this music. Listen. It's in French. Bonjour. So how the H did we get such a French presence? New Orleans. The city of Orléans is a French city, right? Where the French colonize it becomes New Orleans. So how did this happen? So the French are mostly up in the north, right? They're around the Great Lakes area. They're not as much interested in colonization. There's some of that. Uh, they established some ports as they are actually just extracting fur trading with the natives. Uh, they want goodies so they can bring them back to the mother country, right? Back to France. Well, you know, they form allies with a lot of the Native American tribes, like the Huron, which were actually called the Wendat. The French called them the Huron, and other uh, tribes in the area. In fact, the French explorer Samuel du Champlain actually helped the Huron wage a war against the Iroquois, which were a confederation of five, later six tribes in the Northeast. Well, the Iroquois and the French did not like each other. The Iroquois hated the French so much that they actually bought guns from the Dutch to fight against the French. Samuel de Champlain helps the natives fight against the Iroquois. Basically, French and Iroquois do not like each other. So whereas the British would form alliances with the Iroquois, originally uh, anyway, the French would form allies with the Iroquois' enemies, right? And do a lot of trading with them. So the Iroquois hate, hate, hate the French. So they buy guns from the Dutch to fight the French. The French are like, we don't want to deal with this anymore. So we're not going to move down the East Coast and settle any colonies there or trade any there. We're done with that. So the French move west. They, they settle in the Great Lakes areas. They set up their forts. forts. But then they decide to travel south down the Mississippi all the way. Why? It makes sense to follow a, ri a river because you have your supply of drinking, you have fishing, you have transportation, you have... So you always follow the rivers, right? Those are the, not only America's first highways, but the world's first highways. So the French explorer La Salle makes it all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico and names he names Louisiana after King Louis XIV. And the, instead of... And he names the port city, the French port city, New Orleans like the New Orleans from France, the same way that uh, the English named New York after the Duke of York, his uh, brother actually. So that's why you have such a strong French presence in the South. I have no idea. I know that show I think is hot. My French sucks. Oh man, this guy's gonna cause a wreck. He's moving so slow. Anyway, so now I am driving through the French Bayou Cajun country. <laughs> I just drive, drove past a sign for a restaurant called the Fiery Crab. <laughs> that sounds good. Fiery Crab. I'm not big on crawfish. I can't do that. The crab legs. Oh yeah. So I'm 19 miles from Baton Rouge. I eat Baton Rouge. And we're heading to the French Bayou. And you know you're thinking the CCR too, right? Bone on the bayou. You're thinking Doug Kershaw. Diggy, diggy, nah. Diggy, diggy, low. But I'm listening to the station where they're all singing in French. I mean, the guy's speaking in half English and half French, but mostly French. And all the songs are French Cajun songs. So this is the American Bayou experience. Uh-oh. Bump. So this is, this is really fun. Uh, I'm on my way to a military uh, museum. Anyway, so I'll holler back when I get to Alabama. Have a good one, guys. God bless y'all. Have a great morning. Teaching history is my business. And business is good, in the words of Major Payne.